Moving into a new space is a demanding business, so my contributions to this week's has been somewhat limited. Fortunately, Sandy has had a more stable time of things of late and has prepared some goodies for us. Hi, Christian. So this week I'm working on the start of a new little project of mine, um, and I'm, I'm drawing inspiration from a long history of composers, electronic composers, rearranging or arranging uh, classical and Baroque pieces for synthesizer. So the most famous person doing this uh, was Wendy Carlos, probably the best well known, but there are others such as Ruth White, Isao Tamita and so on. Um, there's a long history of people taking existing classical pieces and arranging those for synthesizer. I thought I'd use this as an opportunity to look at a couple of different concepts when arranging an electronic piece of music and performing it. So it's going to be quite a quick video this week. Um, the piece that I'm working on an arrangement of is by Francois Couperin, who is a uh, famous French Baroque composer, and uh, it's one of his harpsichord pieces called, excuse my pronunciation, Le Barricades Mysterieuse, or Le Barricade Mysterieuse. I've decided to arrange that for the Analog 4, but sequence it in Ableton Live. I'm basically playing the notes back from the sequencer, and the performance aspect of it is going to be controlling the different uh, timbral parameters, so filter cutoff, uh, pulse width modulation, and so on. And that got me thinking about uh, macro controls. And a macro control, I'll show you first, and then I'll explain what it's doing, really. Let's jump into a little snippet of the Francois Couperin piece, and I'll uh, I'll just play it through from start to finish uh, without changing any parameters so you can hear what it sounds like and then I'll try each of the three parameters that I've set up on the analog for. So just very quickly, I've got the various different tracks here on one of these macros set up to control filter cutoff frequency, and each of these is scaled to a different depth. On macros B and C, I've got a whole bunch of different uh, controls set up that are a little bit more extreme than that. So as you can hear, uh, macro controls are a very powerful tool. They allow you to have a, a nuanced control over several different parameters at once. There's several digital systems where that's uh, very easy to configure and arrange, you know, Nord Modular, the Native Instruments Machina uh, environment has this sort of thing built into it, and of course the Electron gear. The idea being that uh, one knob on the controller is actually sending different control signals to several different parameters all at once, and they might be scaled to different values, so you might just be going from 0 to 10 on filter cutoff, and you know, 0 to 100 on pitch or something like that. And it got me thinking about how I'm going to implement that on my Eurorack. Um, as I said way back, uh, I have this 1U row at the very top of the Eurorack, which I'm going to be filling with sort of utility modules, uh, the useful things that uh, don't necessarily make sound. So how might you take a, a control voltage signal, a single control voltage source, and make that into a macro control? Uh, well, first you'd need to uh, split that signal so that you have multiple different versions of it. And as the as that sentence suggests, the thing you would need is a multiple, a MULT module. Um, you can get passive or buffered multiples. Um, the difference between the two being that buffered multiples are much better at tracking pitch when you're splitting volts per octave. They don't um, sort of divide and mess up your, your volt per octave tracking. Um, so what you would want to do is take your initial control voltage and split that into, say, three different signals. And then if you wanted to be able to scale those different signals, then you would want to send them into an attenuator, which means you can take that signal and reduce it down uh, proportionally, which would mean that you could send several different versions of the same signal at different scales uh, to different parameters. And then the other thing that you can do from the performance mode of the Analog 4 is invert that signal in a different direction. Uh, so you could either use a separate uh, inverter module, which will just make the 0 to 10 become 0 to negative 10, for instance. Um, you, could, you can also get modules, and this is probably what I'm going to use, uh, called attenuverters, 
which allow you to both attenuate and invert. Usually it's a knob that will be at zero in the middle and go negative and positive in each direction. So essentially, if I want to be able to do one performance parameter like I have on the Analog 4, uh, then I would probably need at least one multiple and probably two or three attenuverters. And that would allow me to send one control voltage signal as a sort of macro signal, uh, controlling several different parameters. Uh, hopefully I'll get some 1U attenuverters and uh, multiples in and I can test that theory out. Um, something else that I could probably do would be to use the performance mode on the Analog 4 and send uh, two or three different CV signals out from the Analog 4. But of course, I only have four of those CV outputs. Uh, so that would maybe be a little bit of a waste of those outputs. Uh, but for now, that's all we have time for this week. So back to you, Christian. Thanks as always, Sandy, for your amazing contributions. Um, tough for me at the moment to contribute to these because my shed is basically kind of downtime at the moment for reasons I won't bore you with. Um, so we'll have to see what I can conjure up for next week. As always, thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. If you like what we do, hit like. And if you want to be notified the next time we put a video up, hit the little bell icon. See you next time.